Thank you, Cinzia, for the introduction and for making my life much easier after this explanation. So I would like to begin with this. The ideal way of evaluating biomechanics would be this. It's controlled, it's the stress strain. We have no IOP, we have the same size and the same thickness. Unfortunately, this is not that possible with alive patients. So what we have to do is this. We have an air puff and we deflect the cornea. And from this, we have to, uh, to evaluate biomechanics. But as Cinzia told us, an eye with a lower IOP could act like a softer eye. Okay. Same thing if the cornea is thinner. The eye could be with the same material. You can see that it's always blue, but it looks softer. So what we are really measuring in, until now was, first of all, IOP. Then we measure corneal thickness with the biomechanics, and at the end of the process, we have the biomechanics, because all these processes are connected one to the other. So, how do we, this, we deal with this? We have two possibilities. The first one is we have a patient that looks abnormal, but we want to know if it is biomechanically abnormal. We have to match this patient with another healthy one that is, has exactly the same intraocular pressure, and we have to be sure that it's the same one and the same thickness. I bet that nobody can do this because it's almost impossible. Or we create normality values with extremely big database, as big as it is possible to have the comparison with each IOP and each CCT. So we will present today this new report called Vinci Guerra Screening Report, which will be inside the new software of the Corvis, and the purpose of this play was to have in a single interface the comparison of normality values to the imported exam, and we, this will be mostly the topic of my talk, and to include an index to separate normal from keratoconic patients, which will be the topic of the next talk. The normative values has already been published in Journal of Refractive Surgery just in the last issue, and it's open access, so if you want to can download it for free. And just to give you an idea, there were 755 patients from three different continents to include variability from different ethnic groups from Italy, so Europe, Rio de Janeiro, South America, and Korea, so Asia. Uh, we have to acknowledge the really valuable work of Professor El Sheikh because without his BIOP, we would never have been able to do it so and it's already included in the display because this BIOP is able to compensate both for age, pachymetry, and biomechanics. So the results of the study. First of all, we found that the best parameters to evaluate biomechanics were highest concavity radius, inverse concave radius, and deformation amplitude ratio and deflection amplitude ratio. Because they were independent from IOP, and they were correlated with pachymetry and age, which are biomechanical characteristic of the eye, because the, we know that the, um, that the biomechanics is increasing, so the, get, the eye is getting stiffer with age increasing. So if it is correlated with age, it means that it's correlated with biomechanics. And we demonstrated that many uh, publications in the past who used old parameters those parameters were strongly correlated with IOP. So if you do not match every patient with another one, uh, comparison between the groups is not valid. So let's see how is the display. This is how the display looks. You will have four different parameters. You can see there. Yeah. Uh, you can select the different parameters. These are just you know, the ones that I put here. Then you will have a diagram on the left of any selected deformation parameter and the normal range for that particular bio BIOP here of the patient. In this case, it's 13 millimeters. On the right, you see a chart which displays the obtained results compared to the whole normal range independence of the BIOP. So you can see that these patients fix inside the mean plus or minus two standard deviation. So it's normal. Then. You have, in the bottom left, it is possible to see what we are already used to see. So it's the actual movie, 
which you see how the cornea deformates. It's the raw image. And then, on the right, all these new values and standard deviation. So we have values and standard deviation of deformation amplitude ratio, highest concavity radius, this new ambrosial relation thickness that Renato has made that is based on the thickness profile over the horizontal meridian from the temporal to the nasal direction. And then, Cinzia's novel stiffness parameter. So you will see that all these parameters are in the middle, so they, means that they mean that this patient is normal. Don't look at this because it will be the, the next talk, okay? So, as you have seen, the patient was normal for all of these parameters, but let's see an abnormal patient. So, in this patient, you can clearly see that we can see that deformation amplitude ratio, here, here, art, here, and stiffness parameters are outside normality values, hmm? all in one display. So the introduction of these normative value ranges inside this new Vinciguera normative display provides for the first time the possibility to interpret corneal biomechanics in the context of normative values and suspect pathology in clinical practice. This report allows the user to have in one single interface all the biomechanical information needed. And to make our life easier, I will present the next talk that will be Corvis Biomechanical Index to easily separate normal from keratoconic patients. Thank you.